Hello, it's Martine here. In this short video, I'm going to walk you through my Todoist beginner setup. This setup can be used with the Todoist free plan, also known as the beginner plan. Let, let me walk you through how I use this setup. Here we go, we'll focus on the sidebar here. Um, you'll see there's nothing in inbox or today at the moment or upcoming, but these are areas of Todoist that I use on a daily basis. When I am looking at my day ahead in the morning, when I start my morning routine, I will be going into today and I will be working on prioritizing my tasks. I'll talk to you more about prioritization and my approach to that in just a moment. If we look at filters and labels, which are favorited here, by the way, I only use filters. Part of my setup really emphasizes the importance of keeping your life zones separate. So in this example, I have two life zones, personal and work. And I think most people will have two life zones, but actually in my real life, I have three. I have personal, work and business. And if you have a similar life to me in that you're employed and self-employed, you might be interested in looking at my pro setup because this one takes advantage of the benefits you get as a pro user in Todoist because you can have more projects but you can check out that other video if that is more suitable to your life. If you have two life zones, then this setup can work for you. So we keep personal and work separate. And what this means is you can avoid switching context too frequently, because when you, you're switching contexts all the time and thinking about work and personal all the time, then it affects your productivity negatively and can cause stress and overwhelm. So I try to keep things really clearly segregated. So you can see I've got I've got uh, filters set up so you can look at your personal tasks in their own area and your work tasks in their own area. And these tasks relate to both projects and areas. More on that in a moment. So they are favorited. And one thing I will point out, you can change the colors to suit your needs, but at the moment, personal are green and uh, work are pink. And this is mirrored at the bottom with projects as well. So personal green, pink for work. Let's dig into the projects and areas set up here. The first thing it's really important that I point out to you is that I use Tiago Forte's para approach to distinguish between what a project is and what a, uh, an area is. So I'm just gonna open up this little explanation here to show you. I'll read it out. According to Tiago Forte's para method, projects are short-term efforts in your work or life that you're working on right now. So these are things with a deadline and when you finish with them, they're gonna be removed from your productivity system. In this case, your Todoist. I've pasted a little link here to an article that can explain para in a bit more detail. In this setup, we're only using the P and the A of para, which is projects and areas. Resources and archives we are not using in this setup. So that's what a project is. So what you'll see is that I set projects up along the top here. So they are effectively sections. So if you had a fourth, you put project four. That is how you would set that up. So each project is a section. And we've got the explanation of what projects are in this little note here. Now, interestingly, in the para method, Tiago Forte says that you, you can have up to 15 projects on the go at any one time. And I guess in his mind, that would be split across personal and work. I don't tend to work that way. I prefer slow productivity, which is Cal Newport's philosophy, where you're working on fewer things and working at a more natural pace. And the third element of that is obsessing over quality. I prefer this approach. So actually three projects on the go at any one time, that works for me. And if you have projects that are brewing, but you're not working on them right now, they can sit in your backlog. So I would put a little task here that just says set up project four in due course. And I would let it sit there as a reminder. Then as soon as I've set up project four, I would delete the task. So a backlog is an area for projects and tasks that you're not working on yet, but you want to work on in the future. And this is very much in keeping with slow productivity again. I want to just cover off a couple of the notes I've left for you here. So there's an explanation of what a backlog is, that little note there. But I want to open up this note about dates. So I have a really specific approach to how I do due dates and due dates in Todoist. That's really confusing. I will explain that. So 
add your task's due date, so by that I mean its deadline, in the description area. So this section here, where this bit of text is, is the description area. So I would put a task at the top where it says a note on dates, and I would put the deadline for this task is whatever the date is. And then where the due date is, I will actually put when I'm going to start the task. So this is when I'm going to do the work, hence due versus due dates. It might be easier to call a due date, a DO date, a start date. It's when you're going to do the work. So add your task's deadline to the description area. Add your task's start date to the due date bit here. And then if you want to read a bit more about that, I have popped a little link to a, an article that I've written about due dates and due dates just here. So that's just a little note on how I like to use dates. And then a note on prioritization. This is my recommendation in keeping with my setup. I recommend inputting your tasks as a priority for. So this is your priority flag set up here. So with no priority and with due dates where possible. But then you allocate the P1, P2, P3 flags every morning in the today view. So you prioritize your task based on what your day looks like. And I've got an article about this for you here. All right, that's projects. So just to give you one example of what a personal project might be, it might be renovate the bathroom or it might be build the shed or something like that. Okay, so personal areas. Again, this is set up in a similar way. So we've got the board view here, but an area is quite different to a project. So let's open up the explanation here. According to Tiago Forte's para method, areas are long-term responsibilities for what you want to manage over time. So they don't tend to have a final deadline. And examples in your personal life zone could be house, pets, health and fitness. And there's that link again to that article. So to give you an example, again, a personal one, a project might be run the London Marathon. So that would go here and you would have project one, London Marathon. And then you'd have a bunch of tasks under here that related to running the London Marathon. So it might be, for me, I don't live anywhere near London. So there might be booking travel. There might be buying a new pair of trainers. There could be all sorts of things under that project. But in areas, health and fitness, there could be some more general area related tasks there. So for example, something health and fitness related, I might want to make an appointment with my nutritionalist to talk about supplementation. So that would be a task under health and fitness. While it loosely links to my London Marathon project, it's, it's general, it's not a specific project related task. It's just about my general health and fitness. So I hope that distinguishes the two uh, more broadly. If you have some weird links between your areas and your projects, don't worry about it. Just make a decision where you're going to put it and be happy with where it is. Don't obsess over the details too much. Otherwise, you'll get stressed and that is not the point of this setup. So that's what areas are. And then we've got the explanation of the backlog here. So any tasks that you're not allocating to an area yet, you just chuck it in the backlog. Um, it's almost like a little catch all area. And then of course, work is set up in exactly the same way. Project one, two, three, four. So you can always see your projects are visible, gives you a really clear idea of what you're working on. And your areas might be different under work. So work admin, professional development, miscellaneous. But your work projects will be very much related to the sort of work that you do. I hope that's helpful. I hope the setup it really works for you and it helps you prioritize your well-being, stop context switching, really get focused on your life zones and get more done. Thanks for watching.